to kind of meet these expectations that have been set student to student based um, and just feeling that like what you are isn't always good enough. I was very frustrated, truly didn't recognize myself in the mirror anymore, became very self-conscious, very comparative to other people. And it's hard having come from that dark place. Um, for myself, it's not a road I ever want to go back down. And when I see other people that look the way I looked, I uh, hurt for them. Walk around Elon University and it's easy to see how beautiful the campus is. But according to some students, one aspect of Elon is even more beautiful than the campus itself. You walk across campus and you see 10 people, you know, like I said, and every single one is better looking than the next. So it's literally your entire life, especially at Elon, you're surrounded by good looking people. And it's very hard to not find yourself comparing. It's a degrading type of culture. You scroll through your Instagram feed on a daily basis and there's just people, everybody at Elon is just trying to put on almost this front. Elon has always had um, students who, or, or a culture of, you know, folks wanting to be very fit. I have noticed probably though in the last four or five years, folks being more fitness centered than being skinny centered. Fitspiration, or Fitspo for short, is an online trend designed to inspire viewers towards a healthier lifestyle by promoting exercise and healthy food. Search the hashtag on Instagram, and these are the images you'll see. Fitspiration can kind of be a wolf in sheep's clothing. Um, it seems like it's a safer outlet. Instead, it helps you focus on all the wrong things again, right? You're focusing on what a body looks like and what your muscles look like instead of what your body can do. With a bombardment of Fitspo on Instagram, it can be easy to get caught up in it all. I actually just this past summer like realized like I was following way too many, like hundreds of random fitness people. I want to say it's because of motivation and it motivates me, but like looking at an unrealistic, at least in my standards, unrealistic body isn't really as motivating as like I like like to think it is. It was all about like those paleo diets or um, eliminate your bread or what, I don't know. I was so conscious of exactly what I was putting into my body um, and I followed uh, a lot of food accounts that were pro-health, pro-slim. Allison Forehand transferred to Elon from Dickinson her sophomore year. She was a two-sport athlete at the Division III school, but was looking for more out of her college experience than just athletics. When she came to Elon, Forehand struggled with the transition. With that came the, you know, the stereotypes of, you don't want to get that freshman 15. And even though I came here and I was a sophomore, um, like I never worried about the freshman 15 because I was on these two sports teams. I was like, I can eat whatever the heck I want and I'm going to be fine. Um, but then all of a sudden you're like, whoa, you don't have that sports to keep you on a, like a workout schedule. you got to create your own workout schedule. And I did it in an unhealthy way. Five, six, seven times a week, something every day for at least an hour to hour and a half to two hours, pretty much. Um, it would be whatever time I could squeeze it in during the day. If it was late at night, I have a test, I always try to make it work. Focus on portion sizes. Don't don't fill your plate up too much with those starches and get more veggies, but then you're filling yourself up with veggies that only can do so much for you if you're working out two hours a day, you're gonna need to put protein on that plate. Warhan was diagnosed with a form of anorexia that she developed unknowingly. She didn't realize she had a problem until her parents noticed a significant weight loss. I wasn't aware of it, and so I never really thought about it until I went home and I realized that it, how it affected my family and those around me. 
we were able to take the necessary steps um, to start to solve the problem. It didn't happen in the blink of an eye, no, um, but it did happen. And I am like exactly where I want to be right now in my life. Um, happy, healthy, I like at perfect weight. Um, and I feel happy and healthy. It's not just that I am, it's like I feel it. Second semester, sophomore year, when I looked myself in the mirror and I was trying to fit into the clothes that I had bought the summer before when I first gained my weight. Um, and those weren't fitting. And I was pretty limited to maybe five or six outfits. And I was very frustrated. Truly didn't recognize myself in the mirror anymore. Danielle Fowler was able to look past the negative effects of Fitspiration and use it as a tool to get healthy. She used the Weight Watchers programs and the Kayla Itzines Bikini Body Guide to get in shape after she had gained weight during freshman and sophomore year. She followed different users on Instagram for motivation. A lot of the users through the Kayla Itzines Guide I follow too just to kind of see like their real stories and their real people just like me. Fowler even took her own progression photos, posting them on social media as part of an article she wrote for the Odyssey Online. A lot of times you don't see the subtle changes and it just seems like, oh, I haven't been doing much at all. But then you look at the transformation and you see, wow, I've worked my butt off for this. Personally, I don't need to be a ripped six-pack bodybuilder. I just want to be comfortable in my own skin. I almost worry that the motivation becomes shame-based. You know, I'm really ashamed of where I am now rather than I really want to take care of myself. Because when we're working from a place of shame, it's all about like, I'm embarrassed about myself, I'm gonna compare myself to someone else, I'm gonna feel bad about myself, and that's what's gonna be what motivates me. There's a lot of talk of like, you know, needing to go to the gym or needing to look a certain way or needing to eat healthier or this and then there's even more talk about other people and what she's doing and how she looks and um, wishing you had her like stomach or her legs or her arms. We just find ourselves without even knowing it being so mean to ourselves and just degrading every part of our body. What is fat talk? Um... Fat talk is when you start disparaging yourself. You're like, oh my god, I look so fat in this, or these jeans make me look fat. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you're talking about fat. You could also be talking negatively about a part of your body or like about how your nose looks or any sorts of other things. That, that sort of negative self-talk that you use, not just like internally, that you're not just thinking about it, but um, that you're hanging out publicly and you use it as a way to get reassurance from your friends. Once one person starts body shaming themselves, I feel like it's like, well, you're lucky, you don't have, like, and it just snowballs into this hour-long discussion of all of my friends or whatever group I'm in just shaming themselves. It either takes two approaches. Either I'm the one that's like, guys, stop. Like, this is bad. Like, what are we doing? Um, because I've struggled a lot with body image, like, my entire life. So I either realize that and take that mindful like component of it and kind of step back and be like what are we doing or I find myself actively engaging in it and once it starts it's really hard to stop. We really need to set in like light little fires within friend groups so you can change the culture within your group that permits this or makes it unacceptable. and it's a Tri-Delta initiative to improve um, women's view of their bodies on campus. So focusing on positive body image and um, encouraging self-confidence in women, which is especially important on college campuses where so many women feel that they have to fit a particular image.
come by and sign the pledge to be Fat Talk Free, um, which is really just encouraging people to recognize that they are worth more than their image. The pledge is basically saying that you should focus on people's worth beyond their image and that you're pledging not to have conversations about body image. So you're more focusing on an individual's strength and their characteristics and all the wonderful things that they're doing. We need to stop like comparing ourselves and start like helping each other and start lifting each other up, knowing that you are you and no one else is you. Um, and also just knowing what positive attributes you have that make you so unique. You, like, you look great and whenever I say that I genuinely mean it. Like, don't judge yourself, you know, like, you're totally, totally fine.